Here this evening we have Paul Flynn and John Henderson. Gentlemen, you're very welcome indeed. Paul, this is a game I think that everybody, uh, all Harding fans are looking forward to. They're expecting this to be a good one. It should be, Michael. It's kind of the standout tie of the Leinster Championship this year. You have the Galway team who've been on the road for the last couple of years trying to make the breakthrough. And Dublin now are going to try building their new status of being league champions. So it's going to be you know, two very evenly matched teams, so it should be a cracker. It should be, and John, I mean, the fascinating thing about this is, of course, from what's been happening with Dublin for the last year or so, to see Dublin Harding fans heading in their droves to Tullamore this evening, and they have been because there was a bit of traffic congestion in the town so for the last yeah. while. Yeah. It's, it's in a transformation from last year. If you go back to where Dublin were last year, I mean, you know, they were beaten in this corresponding tie significantly by Kilkenny, 419 to 12 points. Mm. Went on, stammered over the next game and were beaten by Antrim. So it's a huge transformation for Dublin. They're now, started the year, everything's on a high. They've won all their matches, ironically, they were beaten by Galway in the league, only the once this year. And uh, really, you know, they capped it all off with a fantastic league display. And... Uh, Everyone in Hurling rejoiced, really, because it's what we are looking for, a new, a new face uh, you know, sure, at the top. Sure. And uh, tonight's going to be a cracker of a match, I hope. You know, I mean, both teams have to win it. Yeah, well, hopefully it is. Uh, John, can I just ask you about one aspect of this? Um, we know the promise that has been in Galway for the last couple of years. They did win the league last year. They had that one-point defeat uh, to Tipperary. It could have gone either way. And yet, we've seen in one of the national papers today, former Galway players coming out and saying... They don't think they've got what it takes. They're not putting enough into it and all this kind of stuff. What do you think about that? Well, it's either psychology trying to be used, but I, I don't think it's the kind of thing you want to be reading in the morning of you sending your troops out to battle. And uh, I suppose former players, uh, myself being a former player, commenting on, on the current team, it's difficult, I suppose. It's, it's the right you earn. But I cannot see how helpful it is. Now, I suppose if it's the truth, we'll see tonight. Like, mm. But I don't think it is. I think teams prepare very professionally. I think players go out and give of their all. Mm. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's, it's an unusual usual one to see in the papers the morning of, of the match. Paul? Yeah, Michael, I think you might see that particular paper on the dressing room wall <laughs> in Tullamore this <laughs> evening. The floor. Yeah, <laughs> and a few slitters being hit at it. But look, it is, you know, maybe it is to something that he, he believes in or he feels, you know, Brendan Linsky said it. And But, you know, the Galway, the, the game has changed, you know, preparation has changed. Players do give up a lot of their time, oh, sure. you know, yeah. and I, I think it's a little bit unfair that OK, if he has question marks about them, fine, but I think to do it the day before one of the biggest matches of the year, the time is a little wrong. Well, I suppose, John, the players won't be worried about that for the next uh, hour or two down in Tullamore. They just want to win the match. Let's have a look at the Dublin team, mm. uh, this team that has come on so much in the last couple of years. And so many managers, John McIntyre of Galway and Anthony Daly, the Dublin boss, and they've been talking to Claire McNamara. Uh, Anthony, we know the championship meetings between you are rare, but if we look back to the league meeting, Galway snatching that late goal, what did you learn from that game? Well, we learned we can't shoot 19 wides and anyway, expect to win, I suppose, Claire, even though you can still win, I suppose, if you do you know, have enough, we don't offer the shots of goal on the day. And, uh, but Galway you know, showed the superior craft, I think, to finish us off. You know, they showed all that big-time experience that they have. So hopefully we've learned a bit since then. You know, we've, we've played Kilkenny and Cork and Kilkenny again. So uh, hopefully we've learned a bit from that. They have uh, Joe Canning starting tonight. You have Thomas Brady back to mark him. That'll be a key battle. I suppose, but you know, always when you blow up these things as, as the key ones, uh, it turns out to be someone else does the damage. So we're hoping up the other end, maybe, you know, Paul Ryan or Patrick Carton or someone does the damage. You know, it's often someone you don't expect on a night like this. Uh, it'll be whoever holds their nerve, really. I expect it to be a great atmosphere out there. And, um, you know, just looking forward to now, get it on. Like. John, you weren't pleased after the Westmead game. You said Galway had a mountain of work to do. How's that been going? Yeah, certainly we've upped the ante over the past fortnight on the training ground. We were disappointed with our performance against Westmead, but that game was all about going up to Mullingar and getting the result and advancing to the Leinster semi-final, which is now ahead of us tonight. Uh, obviously, Dublin are a big step up in class. They've been the hurling team of the year so far, Walsh Cup champions, National League winners, and they have serious momentum. So we know it's going to be a massive ask of our players this evening to come through this. And the subs you brought on the last day, including Joe Canning, they all start for you tonight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we've made four changes in personnel. Shane Cavan and Tony O'Gregan obviously will bring a lot of experience to the half-back line. Uh, Aina Ryan uh, is a player who came on, on the scene last year and did very well for us. And of course, Joe Canning needs no introduction. Joe has had an injury troubled uh, campaign. He hasn't played that often for us, but you know he, we're delighted to see him lining out tonight and he's in good fettle and I hope the rest of the lads are the same as well. Yeah, John McIntyre and Anthony Daly. The 22-year-old from Ballyboden St. Enders. who got a goal early on in the uh, match against Offaly from the penalty. Has this opportunity to open the score here, and he does so. Perfectly placed free over the bar, 
and that'll be a nice one to settle him down. Yeah, from just outside the 20 metre line. And Joe keeps it on a low trajectory, and it's hit there off the stick of Tomas Brady. And it's cleared out of defence. I think it was Peter Kelly who stopped it first and cleared by Brady. Been easier free than the first one. Central position, and he makes no mistake. It's a two-pointed freeze by Paul Ryan, who incidentally took over the free-taking of the Dublin team when a uh, few positional switches, but I'm sure Joe will, Joe will put this one over to get Galway up on the scoreboard. Well, Peter Kelly is a good 20, 25 metres away from him this time, and Joe rises it properly and puts it over the bar. So a point eventually for Galway, for Joe Canning, but only four minutes are gone, two points to one Dublin. Tickets there from a cubicle, which is right there in the centre of the picture, as it were. And there's a like blood sub report. Ryan Dwyer. Ryan Dwyer. Last weekend, Henry Shefflin coming out to do something similar for Kilkenny. This one's got to drop well short, 20 metres out from the Galway goal. Back there to collect. Shane Kavanagh helped out there by Damien Joyce. Comes out into the middle towards... David Burke slipping on the uh, greasy turf. There's been a lot of rain here today, plenty of showers towards Cyril Donlan. This time collected, however, by Peter Kelly. And the centre half back gets it way down towards Patter Cartman, coming away from his full forward position where he started tonight, ahead of Adrian Collinard. Pumped in there, low, inside towards Keeney. Back out again towards Patter Carton, the O'Toole's man, back to Keeney. Little hand pass this time, perfectly executed to Conor McCormick, but he's lost it there as far as Tony O'Gregan. And Regan lets it into the forwards, first time, in towards Joe Canning. And Canning gets inside his man, Tomas Brady is down, injured, as play continues. Canning advances, what a goal! That is a sensational shot by Joe Canning. A sensational goal by a wonderful player. Seven minutes are gone. Well, he got by his man, who is still down injured. Yeah, definitely, you know, great goal there by Joe Canning. You know, he came around his man, Patrick Carter, looks like a double blow for Dublin, but Joe kept step coming. What a shot, top of the net, gave, gave Gary Maguire no chance, but it looks like Tomas Brady's in trouble. That obviously, that injury hadn't fully healed, and I, I, I really can't see him continuing. Well, that is a huge... Dublin, who had 19 wides when the teams last met in the league back in March. But this time, no mistake whatsoever by Paul Ryan. He's in form, looking confident, looking good and Dublin get to within a point. James Skell's puck out, this time it was uh, Liam Rush who got out there first, released quickly, great hoop, brilliantly done there by David Burke, but uh, Keeney following up, and that's got over the bar. Good point by Conal Keeney, first of the match for the 28-year-old. A great way to come off, Ger. And This one did. Well, Keeney made his hurling debut back ten years ago. Watch this again. This is Avers. Paul Ryan ready once again to add to his three points so far. This is his first 65 now. And it's wide. Second wide. So a bit of a bit of a new experience for him. Paul Ryan ready to take this. Having missed the 65, this one from an angle is a good one, and it's over the bar, and Dublin lead once again by five points to 1-1. One, one. At the moment, your Dublin seem to be getting on top in the middle part. Comes back here to take this. He's 85 metres out. It's huge, it's straight, it's brilliantly over the bar. Five out of six points now for Paul Ryan, and Dublin lead by six points to 1-1. One, one. So important to have your free taker on the ball, you know, as you said, Jared, five from six, very, very impressive stat. Well, Galway remember here now, middle of the park, breeze in his face, lots of cloud overhead, it's ominous. This time he's trying to place it, he was trying to pick out David Burke with a diagonal pass, and it didn't work out for him. Shane Cavada trying to ignite this Galway team into action. Since the goal, they really haven't done anything. Conal Keeney, big one down intended for Patter Carton, comes instead to David O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan 
going this way and that back to Carton again this time going for a point but that is drifting away or is it the umpires aren't too sure uh, made his debut 10 years ago but opted for football from 2004 up to uh, up to this year Paul Ryan hitting it with his customary accuracy at this stage he's settling in to enjoy himself here in uh, O'Connor Park in Tullamore surface by the way is excellent it really is first class Well, James Scahill has been the busier of the two goalkeepers, although Gary Maguire has had to pick the ball out of his own net. This time the pressure is on over there in the half back line of Dublin's. Slip back there by Adrian Cullinan. Again, worked forward towards Cyril Donnellan. The backs trying to do their bit of covering, back helping out Oshin Goff. And that time, it wasn't the throw the referee has decided. Sometimes it's hard to make one's minds up Peter Kelly clearing huge one way down towards Paul Ryan battling there with Damian Joyce back to help minutes only two scores for Galway after 23 minutes Galway have made 17 scoring chances to Dublin's 11 so far and here comes David Burke slipping it forward as far as Joe Gantley Gantley for 45 meters out they need a score Galway and he can supply it Good point by Joe Gantley, made for him by David Burke from the middle of the park. Yeah, great score there by Joe Gantley, you know, great strike after it. Also interesting to see Damien Hayes gone to centre forward with Cyril Donnell gone in full. Once again, it's Galway winning it in their own half-back line, slipping it forward for Damien Hayes, middle of the park, in as far as David Burke. Trying to make some space for himself and to pick out the best option towards Joe Canning. Got a knock that time. They haven't got more scores on the board at this stage. I think neither team, as you say, will be particularly happy with their first half performance so far. 32 minutes gone. Place in the Leinster final, of course, against Kilkenny at stake as uh, Paul Ryan taps over number seven for the evening. One point at the end of it, that's all that will matter to them. Object of the exercise, winning this game in Tullamore and getting to the Leinster final, just two weeks away. That's batted back down by Alan McCraw, back as far as Conal Keeney, he's got one from play, and now he's got a second. Yeah, great score by Conal Keeney, you know, I, I, I think John McEnany would be disappointed, you know, David Burke actually made the run, but James Cahill put it over his head and it was a simple block down, Conal Keeney had stepped out, and a good score by Conal. He's the only Dublin player to score from play at the moment. As James Cahill pucks Dublin have it for the opening half, as that's touched back down again. And after it goes, Liam Rush, taken neatly by Conal Keeney, exerting an influence here, taking off past Tony O'Gregan, checking his stride, slipping it back outside here towards David O'Callaghan, hoping to make an angle for himself, and the umpires ignore the pleas for wide and wave the white flag. And David O'Callaghan from St. Mark's sets his first point of this Leinster semi-final, and it's 10 points for 1-2, and it looks a bit better for Dublin now. Yeah, great run by Conor Keeney, and that time, you know, took the right option, you know, didn't shoot himself, seen Dotsie O'Callaghan outside him, one hand pass over the bar, great score there for Dublin. But again, they're half-back then as well on top, Liam Rush gone to centre-back, you know, he's hurling... Page, somewhat mishit it, and Simon Lambert at left half-back, or near it, clears it away, taken in, and dropped by Shane Kavanagh, recovered quickly, back to Burke. Trying to place it there for Joe Gantley to get on to, but it's well read by Liam Rush. He's covering immense amount of ground. Doing really well in the number six position right now. Mentioned number sixes, that was Tony O'Gregan fumbling it. And it runs on as far as Keeney. It's an awkward angle. It's a great point. Three for Conal Keeney in this first half. There's a bit of shouldering going on, but... Uh, Bit like calves left out for the first time after about six weeks. But nothing serious. This was what it was really all about. Conal Keeney. Yeah, fabulous score of his left left hand side. You know, his third point there. And again, you know. The hand pass inside here. Successfully struck. And that one has gone That's over nice. the bar. It's a brilliant That's point it. once again by David O'Callaghan. And Dotsie has got his second. So 12 points to 1 2. And a much, much better last 15 minutes of the opening half by Dublin. Yeah, fabulous score again by David. So far, it's not been the, the free-flowing game that we'd hope for. Uh, obviously, the wind is a factor down there, but Dublin won't worry about that. They're they're carrying on where they, they left off against Offaly and also, of course, in the league final. Absolutely, Michael. They've uh, 
you know, for the first quarter of an hour, they, they tore into Galway and, you know, their, their physicality is, is very noticeable there. And uh, the half-back line in particular, well on top, forced Galway into a couple of changes. Kind of brought Galway back into it a little bit there, midway through the first half, but, you know, the last 10 minutes there, Dublin are completely on top. They are. The wind is a factor, John. There's no question about that. But you reckon that Dublin needed maybe seven or po eight points at halftime if they've got the seven? Well, yes, and, and it's looking a lot better now than it was probably midway through the first half. And uh, I think Dublin have, have kind of put up a bit of a gap there and, and expanded it. Uh, and I suppose really Joe Canning's goal has kind of kept Galway winning because if you take the goal out of the scoreline, mm. it's a pretty poor scoreline for Galway. And uh, I'd say that's a concern for them that they're really not getting the points on the board, really. But, you know, it's all to play for for both teams, really, here. Um, I Not wouldn't sure. say Galway are out of this by a long shot. No, but uh, Dublin using that wind and getting a couple of good points in the first. A lot of uh, scores and frees, obviously, but yeah. also good points from play. And once again, Conal Keeney at the centre of a lot of things. Yeah, Michael, I think Paul Ryan there had uh, seven scores, seven frees out of eight, and, and just totally mm -hmm. lined. But then, towards the latter half of the half, they, um, they, they found a range. And in fairness to Conal Keeney, he moved centre forward found a bit of space on Tony O'Gregan who's kind of leaving him wander a bit Tony. Ron's not producing anything this might produce something as Joe Gantley point scorer in the first half has his first attempt at the second and it raises a white flag for Joe and for Galway and that's the start they've been looking for 12 points to 1-3 now. Yeah, this game's going to really liven up, I'd say. Galway are definitely out on a mission. That was a great score there by Joe Gantley. He's second from play. He's the only point scorer for Galway at the moment. Two attacks, four working his socks off as Liam Rush gets the decision from the referee who said uh, centre half back ball quickly taken up towards Paul Ryan trying to get inside Shane Cabada from an awkward angle he strikes it brilliantly squeezed it between the posts somehow and that's an eighth point for Paul Ryan the other seven all from freeze during the first half how about this one here took on his man the angle was getting tighter and tighter it's an amazing point fabulous point down at the other end, Galway trying to look for scores here. Back towards Kearns. The man is just freshly in, and that has touched the defender. But for free, goal from play. And that is gone wide. Not his night. And the referee has had words with the defenders. Gary Maguire then ready for what might transpire here. Anything is possible when this man's around. Joe Canning. 40 minutes in, going for the goal, it's stopped, it's scrambled, hands and knees job, out comes Gary Maguire, under pressure there from Angus Callanan, and that is going to be a puck out for Dublin. Great work by the goalkeeper, just watch it again. Here again. Yeah, it's a great save, I think Gary Maguire got a save on it, and again, came out with the ball, and he was blocked down on the way out, so... It's a puck out, so you listen, you know, seven points down, Galway could really do with a, with a goal there, so great shot, but in fairness to Gary Maguire, he was up to it and a great save. Well, Gary thought it might have been a free out, it's a puck out instead. Dropping it into the middle of the park, Burke waits, Tony O'Gregan came, back there as well is Simon Lambert. Lambert for Dublin up towards Patter Carton, taking it on here is McCrabb, Alan McCrabb. As a support player, doesn't need that support player because he put it over, punched the air with delight immediately afterwards. And a first for the 25-year-old from Kreaf Kieroin. And now it's 14 points to 1-3. That's a very good response. And Dublin are showing here that they're going to live with whatever Galway can throw at them in this particular semi-final. He's got one score and obviously won the free and simple effort now for Paul Ryan, I'm sure. Simple as you say. So that's nine points for Paul Ryan. Eight of them. 22 years of age, Joe Canning. Central enough position, Breeze behind him. Galway will be hoping and praying this goes over as the miss comes down again, and this time it does draw a white flag, so it's a goal and two points now for Joe Canning. 15 points to 1-4, and Galway fans... Every Dotsie against two, back to Carton, the free man. It's like a two-against-two two game out in the corner here. Carton... Beautifully across, Ryan O'Dwyer was coming on to it. Goalkeeper happy enough to take it. Goal opportunity. Full effort here for, for, for Paul Ryan to, to crack up another score. And no need for him to go for a goal or anything like that. They're not in a panic situation, Dublin. They've got 15 points, and now they should have 16. He's the top 23 in his embryonic career. Sun is out again, rain easing a little. Very pleasant 
scene. Yep, especially for a Dublin hurling fan. And Paul Ryan is delighting the uh, travelling band here. He's brought his total to 11 points. Four of them now in the second half, and it's only uh, 16, maybe 17 minutes into the second half. Galway needs scores. They need to get going. They need to show some leadership in there. Ocean Goff trying to deny them the cornerback. Back it comes to Joe Gantley, and he keeps plugging away and puts this one over the bar. Third point for Joe Gantley from Beha. Adrian Cullinan slips it forward to Joe Canning. All alone now, 65 metres out from his own goal, having a go for a point himself, something of a trademark, and that's a trademark Joe Canning point, certainly. Goal and three now for the big man from Portumna. Can he be the one? to guide this side over the remaining minutes, 18, 19, maybe 20 minutes of the match. Can Galway still win it? They're behind by 17 points to 1-6. Next score again. Gary Maguire through the centre. Dublin trying to win the puck out, succeeding. Simon Lambert into the corner. Across there to come and take it is Paul Ryan. Making a better angle for himself. He's already hit one super point from the other angle, and this is another one. A fabulous 12th point for the youngster from Bally Bowden St. Enders, and the Dublin fans really loving this display. Just watch this again here. Fab fabulous score. You know, you see him stepped out onto his left hand side. You know, we were giving out to him in the first half, but I mean, that's some score. And this time it's one in the middle of the park by Liam Rush out right now and you were the Galway boss what changes would you make if you had to do so Liam what, what might turn it their way as I said here there's no player on top you know it's very very hard when you're losing in every position let's see what happens here as it comes in there Gant yeah. oh, it's in Joe somehow Gantley. Joe Gantley a goal has come out of nothing and Gantley has got a goal in the 56th minute and that just might spark the revival they require he's got a goal and three now from that huge free by James Skehill, which wasn't dealt with adequately by the Dublin backs. Yeah, and as it came ball. in here, just watch it. Yeah, it's a long ball, he just gets a hurt to it, and you know, it's very hard. The goalie really had no chance, couldn't see it, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a scrappy enough goal, but look, it's up on the board, you're back to six points, you know. Again, gives him a lifeline. Certainly does, and uh, there's a change. Kevin Hines is in, in place of uh, number eight, David Burke. And now, Galway will believe that they can win this match, that they can turn it around, and that scrappy enough goal there by Joe Gantley could prove priceless in the end. They're still arguing the point over there with the linesman, referee having to step in. Yeah, I think there was a bit of after there. I think Ryan DeWire and one of the Goggle defenders seemed to be shouldering each other. But to me, it was handbag stuff. It didn't look like anything major. I'm sure they just move on down the field and get on with it. I'm sure Galway wished they would anyway, but he seems to be taking Ryan's name. 18 points to 2-6, 18 points to 12, 6 points the margin. And Ryan O'Dwyer is going to get a red oh. sent oh. off in the 57th minute. They've just conceded a goal, they're down to 14, this match is turning on its head, or could. I'd like to see that again now. Absolutely, I didn't see it again. I'd like to see it again after here we are now. There's Ryan Dwyer, he got, in, he got entangled there with Shane Kavanagh. Shane jumps up. Oh, oh, oh I see it. Yeah, he got him in the back of the head. Yes. Back of the head for Shane, Ka for Shane Kavanagh and yes, Ryan Dwyer. That foolishness has let him down and let his colleagues down. And it's allowed Joe Canning and the rest of the Galway men to feel that there's a victory here in Tullamore in this live match of the Saturday game for you and for them. Out it comes to Joe Gantley. Galway's most consistent attacker, most productive. Back it comes towards Kearns, the second half sub, yeah. over the bar from the stick of Alan Kearns, his first, and they're eating into the lead at this stage, and now it's Dublin who need a major boost. Looks like there's something happened between Conor Keeney and Joe Canning there. Exchanging pleasantries, and they need to be careful. Raising sticks like that in front of the referee, not the wisest course of action. Yeah, but again, for Dublin, you know, they really need to get a grip in the game now. I mean, they've gone out of it there in the last few minutes. And 18 points to 2-7. A five-point lead. Wonderful position. Facing into another match with Kilkenny. Team they beat in the Alliance League final. Paul Ryan had 12. He's now got 13 points. What an amazing display of shooting. Real Dublin just holding the possession. Galway trying to get... The ball away from goal, Kevin Hines in particular, 
who was captain of the under-21s some years ago, but it's all about 2011, and in 2011, the Alliance League champions are through to a Leinster final once again, where they'll be playing Kilkenny in a fortnight's time, and it's a delight for Liam Rush on the night when he celebrates his 21st birthday, he's part of a Dublin team that have come to Tullamore and have justified their position as a team to watch out for in the current season. Yeah, Joe, you know, Dublin will be very, very happy with their win, you know. They really set themselves a platform in the first half, and, you know, they, they, they found a stride. It was one it was one two to five points early on, but, you know, in fairness, when they got their stride, they kicked on. They win six clear at half-time. And Galway the two men in the full forward line, uh, they use the hand pass to great effect. They're using the short ball to great effect. So they, they, they don't waste the possession when they gain it in the middle half of the field. And, they, you know, they send the ball up. Uh, they're also very they're free-taking. You know, was the difference as well there tonight? And if you compare Galway and Dublin, well, you know, by a long shot, Dublin won that battle. Certainly a, a very pleasing performance from a Dublin point of view and sets up a real Leinster final. And all this year, people have been praising Anthony Daly and his backroom team for the organisation they've brought to this Dublin side. And you could see every evidence of it there again tonight. Yeah, Michael, they've obviously put a huge effort in training. The physical shape that the Dublin team are in is phenomenal. Um, the work rate they show near the second half. Like they just closed down Galway at every opportunity. Um, they bunched kind of the half back line midfield area, leaving room up, up front then for you know to, to kind of manoeuvre the ball. And they, you know they were very unlucky in the second half not to get in for a goal there at one stage. Paul Ryan put a lovely ball across, but uh, I think it was Fergal Moore got a good clip. But uh, Dublin were, were by far superior tonight, and you know they're not going to be easy to deal with in the next few games. And leaders all over the field for Dublin. Oh, there was, and I mean, you might have said like to lose their full back so early at a crucial stage. In fact, it nearly worked to their advantage because, you know, Liam Rush went back to centre back and had a stormer of a game. And you know, all the others they seemed to up their game from that point. The rest of the Dublin team and their work rate went up. And like Peter Kelly went back in full back, had a great game. You know, and like yeah, you, right. you'd say, oh, are they doomed after that incident? But they weren't. They, they, you know, showed a great professionalism and, and great character, and also their style of play is just complementing themselves the whole time so uh, they'll be very pleased with their performance and uh, we'll look forward to taking Uncle Kenny I think. John you mentioned Liam Rush there in your little chat he is our man of the match indeed down in Tullamore and he's talking to us now. Yes congratulations Liam Rush is the Guinness man of the match. Des Roach is here to hand over the award. Yeah, Liam, congratulations. Today is your 21st birthday so quite the present. That is yeah. My mum was asking me what I wanted today and I said a surfboard, but I suppose this match is more important, really, isn't it? It's just, I don't know, a bit of, bit of luck, a bit of destiny, maybe the 21st birthday got the win. I'm just delighted we got the win now, to be honest. And they really put us to the pin of our collar. I mean, they were pushing on. There was a bit of win there, and they'd a few too many wides, probably a bit like we did in the league, and that just cost them. But delighted now with the character we showed. Like, we had Ryan sent off, and I didn't see what for, but, you know, we kept going, battled on. Absolutely delighted with the win. Are you delighted now with the progression from the league final? You've stepped it up to championship level. You looked fit, strong and focused. Yeah, you know, that's been a little uh, hallmark of our play this year. We are we do seem to be, you know, ridiculously fit. And that's probably largely thanks to our physical trainer, Martin Kennedy. I'll just give him a shout out there. But yeah, you saw the league. I mean, we're, we're very fit, we're very strong. We tackled very hard. And, you know, that's probably what goes through on the day. And a rematch with Kilkenny to look forward to? Yeah, it's, it's, it'll be fun, won't it? Yeah, I mean... They're obviously flying, got a few lads back. You saw them against Wexford there. I mean, they got Henry back and Michael Fenn, a few boys. Tommy, well, Tommy Walsh might be back as well, you know. So we know it's going to be a different challenge altogether. League final and championship are two different animals. But, you know, we, we relish the challenge. Well, well done today and happy birthday. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday and congratulations, of course, to Liam Rush. I don't know, Paul Flynn, will he get that surfboard? But uh, Dublin <laughs> surfing their way into the Leinster final. Yeah, I don't think it'll be fun either, Michael, the, the Leinster final. Like, um, you know, obviously Kilkenny will have a stronger outfit than they had in the league final, but you know, Dublin are there on merit. They're, they're, the, they're the farm team of the whole league and the championship, so there's no reason whatsoever why they should fear Kilkenny. It'll be a different type of game, you know, Crow Park and, and, and the, the spaces that that bring. But, you know, Dublin have the pace and they have the power to deal with any team, so, you know, it's going to be a great game. Let's talk for the moment, John, about Galway. Mm. Um, defeated, obviously, tonight. We'll have to see how the rest of the championship pans out for them. But, uh, you know, looking at that forward division there, apart from Joe, 
in a Leinster semi final. You know, that's, it's going to do wonders for confidence and belief. And I suppose we've we've built on that again for, from the league. And every step in the league was just a confidence builder for us. And you know, without, without that, we probably wouldn't have been able to perform like today. So it's just great, you know. It's disappointing, but look, we have to pick ourselves up now and actually just kind of build on it. Take the criticism. A lot of we had a lot of knives in our back for the last while, and I think. We proved them right today, so we have a lot to come back from now, and we have to build it up, pick it up from here, as I said, and, and drive on. We felt ready for today. We we listened to all the stuff and read all the stuff in the papers, but we we tried to concentrate on ourselves, and uh, we've worked very hard all year, and and you know we we felt we were ready for the for the encounter. You know, probably wouldn't be good enough to win a Leinster final, but it's all about getting over today. I appreciate more than anybody else that there's Galway supporters gone home tonight and. They're giving out yards about John McIntyre and the management team and the players. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. I'm not going to run away from my responsibility or anything like that. It's enormously disappointing. Um, I thought it was a game that uh, we had prepared well for. And I, the least I expected was a big goal with performance. It didn't really happen. We're going to have to look at the reasons for that. Uh, I have no excuses to make clear. Dublin were the better team in the evening. I can't run away from that, and I wish them well in the, best, in the rest of the championship. Cyril, what's the bigger talking point from that game? That Dublin were in prep chat about the uh, qualifying draw in a moment, but two more hurling matches to show you now. Yesterday's uh, preliminary round in the qualifiers, Leash against Cork in a moment.